your goodness and your faithfulness each day. I'm convinced it's not because I am worthy to receive the kind of love that you give. And I'm grateful for your mercy. And I'm grateful for your grace. And because of how you poured out yourself, I have come to sing this song out in praise.
has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. What are you? Father, we, we thank you, we magnify you, we praise you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we invite you in to this space, to this wherever each and every single person is. For you said where two or more are gathering your name, there you shall be among them. We thank you. We thank you that you're with us. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your gift. We pray, Lord, Father, as we spend time to sit at your feet, Lord, that, Father, that you will minister to each and every single person, wherever they are, on the bus, on the train, at home, wherever they are, Father, that you will minister to us this evening. We have not gathered unto men. We have not gathered unto see a show, but, Father, we come to receive from you. Holy Spirit, minister and speak to each and every person. Whatever situation, wherever they are, Lord, whatever day, the type of day they've had, Father, I pray that, Lord, that your spirit, your presence will minister and will rest upon them. Whatever stress, whatever circumstances, Father, Lord, this evening, let them feel your presence, Lord. I pray for every single person. Now, Father, as we come to you, there's so many things we could be doing, enjoying and doing whatever the world does. But, Father, we have decided, Father, to come to your feet to hear, to listen to you, to receive from you. I pray that none of us will leave here the same way. But, Father, we wish you transformed. That whatever is dead in us to you, Father, this evening shall be waking up. That, Father, we will connect in a new and a brighter way with you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your revelation. We thank you for everything, Lord God. We thank you for the capacity that we even have to breathe, to walk, to work. We thank you. Father, we thank you. Because it says we thank you in all situations. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you. No matter what the doctor says, no matter what the letter says, Father, we still thank you because you are God, Lord. 
We thank you because many people will wish to be in our shoes, Lord. We thank you. We thank you because we're not where we were, but we're moving and progressing forward. We thank you. We thank you for the families amongst us. We thank you. We thank you for the church that we're part of. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the vision. We thank you for the purpose. We thank you for everything, Lord. We magnify you. We thank you because you're showing yourself God in our lives, Lord God. When we look back, we see the greatness. We see the a testimony. We see the things that you have done. We exalt you, Lord. We thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord God. What is there we can give? Father, what, how much can we give? Father, it's never enough to give. So thank you, Lord God. But we thank you. We thank you for everything. We thank you for your blessings, Lord. Father, have your way in our lives. Be magnified and be exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome again um, to um, another wonderful um, evening of Bible study. Thank you, Sister Esther, for that. I know she was um, distracted. We thank God for the lovely young ones. Um, and he was worshipping God in his own way. So, hey, don't worry. We thank God. We look stressed. But God is your strength. Let's, let's just thank God for the children that we have, regardless of what and where they are. The fact our children can move, they can walk. There's some people out there that will be begging to have the children that we have. There's people in the hospitals where they're sleeping every day next to their child. Or their child. So we thank God for the children. We thank God for the blessings. Our children come and they go. They can talk to us. We can speak to them. I, I'm just in the mode of just thanking God, regardless of what situation, wherever I am. I thank God for the job I have. Even if you don't have one, thank God that you're able to eat, that God has provided and placed you in a place like this. Some people are in a country where they don't have a job. They don't even know where their meal's coming from. They can't even provide, I mean, like, um, um, depend on the government or some benefits, but you are here. And you know that no matter how hard it is, that somehow you have a foot, a safety net to fall on. And so we thank God. I thank God on your behalf, wherever you are, whatever situation you're in, I thank God on your behalf that you are even able to have capacity to listen and you have a God in your life that loves you and watches over you. God, as I always say, God may not change the circumstances or the situation you're in, but trust me, God has a great plan for you and for me. So God, we thank you. We thank you in all situations. Amen. Amen. You can see what kind of mood I'm in. Um, this is just a thankful mood. I'm grateful. I'm just grateful for where God is. We were discussing earlier on about um, some of the things that we do and we've done. And I can't comprehend to explain how. It just has to be God. Amen. So I want to encourage somebody today, whatever you're in, trust and have faith that God, the God you serve is more than capable, more than able. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, um. I want to try and make the most and maximize the time I have today um, um, as we continue on our um, um, series of discipleship. And um, we've been um, we've been covering um, the importance and of us now that in the season we're in and we prayed, we fasted, we've done everything. Now we must be as disciples with evidence of the God that we serve in results and everything we did. As Christ said to his disciples, greater works than these you shall do. He done it within the short time that he was on earth. He done some amazing and magnificent things. And he said, as believers and as followers, as disciples, we should do greater works. And I am looking for those evidence of those great works in my life. Amen. Amen. Let's kick off the Bible. We'll start with um, um, two Bible readings. We'll read from um, John chapter one from verse one. So John chapter one from verse one. So John chapter one from verse one, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. Amen. And then let's quickly shift over to Psalm 99. Um, so Psalm 99. And I'll read, I'll read from verse one. So Psalm 19, 9, 119, sorry, Psalm 119. And it says, blessed are the undefiled in the way, in, in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. 
blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the, with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded to keep your precept diligently. Oh, that my ways are directed to keep your statutes. Then I would then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commands. I will praise you, you with upright of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, or do not forsake me utterly. Amen. Amen. So this um, today's topic, as we continue in discipleship, is the importance of scriptures. Now, I don't know how I can really push this as much as um, I can say it, but as, as along with prayer, as disciples and as believers, along with play, prayer, the study of the word of God is one of the most important thing in our lives. I'll repeat it again. Along with prayer, the study, the, 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 the proactive, when I say I need to make sure that proactive and the diligence of being in scripture and reading the Bible is one of the most important thing in our life as Christians. Why? Because in the word is how we know God more in his scriptures. And I'm going to create and um, come back to that later on. The Bible contains the word scriptures. When I say the Bible scriptures, I'm, I'm talking about the same thing, contains a message of love and a hope to you and me from the Lord himself. It's a love letter. It's a it's a guide. It's a manual. It's 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 everything we live and are based by. It's the clearest. When I say the clearest, it's the clearest way that God communicates to you and me. Now, some people are gifted, and by the grace of God, that like, we should all desire these gifts to to hear, to see, to um, to um, see this beyond the natural, to hear God, to um, allow God to speak to him. Like some people speak, mostly God speaks to me through my dreams and things like that. Some people are different; they hear audibly. But the clearest way for every believer to hear and to know and to communicate with God is through His Scriptures. Amen. Today, many people identify as Christians. Many people. You see people coming up in the media industry, coming up to receive their awards. And they say, I give thanks to God. They walk around with the big fat chains on their neck with a cross. And everything. everybody and so many people, even I was looking at statistics on, on the, about the, the Christian. Although, yes, we say that Christianity might be decreasing, but Christianity is the, is the number one faith in the whole entire world. Right. So Christian, regardless of what we say, it's growing and growing because everybody is claiming to be Christianity. But what you need to understand is there are very many different wide range of them. Okay. Most, most define and people define their Christianity in many different ways, many different ways. So today I want to clarify a few things and then touch on the importance of making sure as believers, we must be in the scripture. We must be scholars of the world, word, scholars of the Bible, scholars of the scriptures. As he says, show yourself approved as ready. Amen. So most people define their Christianity as the world around them, as the philosophy of their life, the concept of the world. Whether we realize it or not, everyone has a worldview. So you find people that the, um, um, they, the, their, their Christian faith is based on their feelings. Their Christian faith is based on their circumstance. Their Christian base is, uh, faith is based on many, many different things. That's why you will find a, 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 a reverend in the church that will say that he agrees with the same-sex marriage in a church and still calls himself a Christian. That's how you find some Christian sector and they, they believe in, in the same-sex marriage or that church, that's solely what it's set for. And you start to begin, how are you reading the same Bible that I am reading? But they are reading it, but what the focus of what they're doing, they interpreting it based on society, based on what is politically correct, based on their own feeling. But I want to point this out, which I'm gonna, I'm jumping in myself, I wanna point it out. The Bible is not based, and it's not true based on your feeling. The Bible can't be interpreted based on your feeling. It can't be interpreted based on the circumstance or the time now. It can't be interpreted by politics. The Bible can only be interpreted by the Bible. Scripture interprets scripture. You cannot take the scripture and start to say that I'm going to interpret it and then use something outside scripture to determine, to, um, determine. And this is where we get error. The true Christians have a biblical view of the worldview. 
to believe and accept the entire Bible as an inspired word of God and so sufficient ultimate uh, um, authoritative source for salvation, faith, and godliness. As a Christian, as a Christian, we believe biblically that this book, this book, right, this book is the truth of everything for us. But we have many sects, and these are the things I want to um, cover tonight. So what happens is somebody gets born again, and then after they, um, they have struggles reading and studying and reading the Bible. I can guarantee you today that you would never come or meet a mature Christian, a mature believer who is not a, um, a scholar. Not say, let me rephrase, not a scholar, but somebody that devotes them time to reading the Bible. It's like me saying I want to be um, a doctor. In fact, let me rephrase that. You come to the GP today and they tell you that uh, Mr. Um, Dr. Raji is going to be your doctor today. And they tell you about my background that I went to medical school for one year. And then for the rest of my life, all I did was every Saturday or every Sunday. So every Sunday I stayed around other doctors, but I did not complete my school. Would you want me to treat you? But this is what we do as Christians. We get born again. We read a few Bible verses and then leave Sunday as just the top up of our faith. Top up, top up. And to go to church ticking as this is what it means for me as a Christian. And hardly ever book like we come to church today. How many people do we look at the number of people that's in this um, Bible study? When we come to church on Sunday, it's packed. So we want to get a degree. We go to university. We spend three years, four years, seven years doing all this reading and studying. But then after the real faith and the real study we should be doing, we minimize it. It didn't cool. Amen. So people are born again, are saved, but then after the scriptures is not part in their life. If we're reading Isaiah, um, you don't have to turn there, I'll, I'll read it for you. Isaiah um, um, 7, chapter 7. Just quickly, I want to just quickly read what, what the prophet was saying to them. Um, so Isaiah 7, from chapter 7. Where am I? Okay, so Isaiah 7 from chapter 7 says, they are talking about the um, to children of Israel. They are like hot, they are all hot like an oven and have devoured their judges. All their kings have fallen. None of them calls upon me. Ephraim is like it has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is like a cake unturned. Right? Ephraim is like a cake unturned. The 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 Bible, the, the, the um, prophet was saying that. The, the, the um, Ephraim is like a cake that's in the oven, but it's burnt one side and uncooked the other side, right? And the, there's not, what do you do with that cake? You take it out and you toss it, um, toss it away because it's useless. You can't eat it. But many Christians are like this, half-baked, right? We come in, we experience the love of God. We experience the, the power. We experience the word. We experience everything, but it doesn't impact the whole of the entire life. So Sunday, we're super Christians. We come and we prophesy, we do everything. But then after our whole entire life, it's not, it's not fully baked. And, it, and that's what we call half-baked Christians. And when challenges come, we fall, we fail. Amen. So the importance of the Bible is based on the fact that the revelation and understanding and knowing God more. As a Christian, the ultimate thing for us is to become like Christ. And it's to know him more and more and more. But only in his word will do that. And even in marriage, you get married. For you to continue growing your marriage, and it's, it is a proactive thing. I have to be proactive in it. I have to be proactive in my marriage. In my rela Every relation, meaningful relationship requires a proactiveness. Hence, the need for us to be in the word. Amen. So those are a few things I've covered as a foundation. We're going to go into a few points of why it's important. So it's important because the word, we look at, we find God in the word. And as Christians, it's our ultimate thing. And we say that um, the word of God is not based on our feeling. It's not based on my um, culture or what. And the word of God is true and it's the ultimate things. And it's, um, it's, it's the original and the, um, what's called, the authority over everything. 
There's no question. I do not have an opinion, but the Bible, the word says it, and this is it. Amen. So that was all um, introduction. So now I want to talk for five points of why as Christians, as believers, we must stay in the word. Amen. The first one, it says in Romans 12, 2, Paul says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will is and is good and pleasing, perfect will. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, world, but be transformed and renewed by, by of your mind. The word of God, the scriptures, is, has the power to transform and to change your mind. In the scripture, the word we soak ourselves in transforms and moves our mind. Our mind. Let me put it this way. Everything, the moment you wake up, everything in this world is trying to conform you to its, to this world. You watch the news, you watch TV, you listen to music. The other day I was actually listening to some music um, on Spotify and I was just going through, not Christian music, and I was just trying to listen. Everything had profanity. Everything had some sexual content. Everything was just, it just wasn't healthy for me. It's difficult to proactively find something that's just clean as possible. Everything you're watching, you're looking, every advert on TV has something that you're just like, what subliminal messages are they saying? You have to be on constant guard. And Paul writes here, do not conform, meaning do not subdue, do not allow yourself to be taken over. Conform, meaning that, do not conform, meaning that there is a fight. And you now have to decide you either fight against it or you conform to it. And he's saying that do not, I can rephrase that, do not, do not give in, but fight to allow yourself not to be conformed and change your mind into this world. Because whatever's in this world is opposing to what God is and it's only in the scriptures. Paul reminds us that you that the world is designed in the way of the way the world thinks is different to how God thinks. In almost every field of life, marriage, sexuality, ethics, finance, power, um, 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 priorities, and listen can go on. Everything that the world does is not in line with God. God's teaching is, in a, is in a, opposing to what the world co um, considers true. Paul suggests the solution to this conflict is subjecting your mind to renewal by testing the opinions of the world against the truth of God. The only way as Paul was suggesting, the only way you can beat this battle is taking what the world says and validating and comparing it to what does God say. Does it marry up? If it doesn't marry up, then, but then after, if you don't spend time in the word, word how are you going to know what God says? How are you going to be able to validate? So when they bring it to you, how are you going to be able to say, what am I measuring it up against? The word soaking yourself, read it, allows you to have that standard. So when it comes to you, you have something to be able to compare it with. Amen. Do not conform. Comply with the rules or behaviors according to every moment we're consistently we're bombarded with things. And if we don't wake and, and have something to compare it with, we we'll just accept whatever. I was, I was saying to somebody, there's no, in this world, there's no sitting on the fence. It's either you're with God or against God. There is no sitting on the fence. Amen. So that's number one. The scriptures transforms your mind. And when the scriptures transforms your mind and it's based on the word of God, that will result in the light type of life you live. Let me put it this way bluntly. The life you live right now is a direct result of the amount of word that you take in. I'll repeat that just to make sure you heard me. The results you have, the lifestyle, the, the condition of your life is a direct result of the life you have right now. Now, let me make sure that I make that clear, right? So your, 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 um, the, the, the things that you permit, the things that you allow is a direct result of the amount of word that you soak in and, um, and how you've allowed the word to change your and renew your mind. Amen. The scripture transforms your mind and the way and your, as a result, your life is impacted. Number two, the word is the truth. In John 14, 6, it says, the Lord Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
I am all. And nobody can come to the Father but by me. The Lord was testifying of himself, of who he is, as the Christ, as the gate, as the pathway, as the source of truth, as the light, as everything. He is the same. Everything else outside me is false, right? But without, without, without this, people, um, everybody, I mean, like all these other people has made, what's it called? Substitute. They say they go that path, we go that path, and then we'll come together. That's not what Christ is saying. There is no other way. I am the truth and the life. Amen. I remember, um, I remember one, um, when I first went, um, I think, I can't remember, I think I was in college, um, was it, I think it was uni or something, yeah. And I had to go to do, I went to do my eye test because I realized that, um, you know, you do regular checkup. So anyway, I went to do a regular checkup. I wasn't wearing glasses then. And I remember when the um, technician put me on the uh, machine and she puts a lens on my eye um, uh, for me to read and for me to read something. Without the lenses, I could read what she was placed in front of me. But when she put the lens, the thing became a lot more clearer. And it dawned on me that all this time I had been looking at things and I wasn't seeing it clearly until she put the lens on there and it revealed the true condition of my eyesight. As, believe, as people in this world that does not have the Bible, right? The, they believe that they are seen clearly. But when you now become a believer and you now soak yourself in the word, your condition, your real condition becomes clearly, right? And I'll, read, and I'll explain that. It says that in, in, in Ephesians 2, um, yeah, Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 2, as you were once dead in transgression and sin, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the rulers of this kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient, all of us also lived amongst them at one time, gratifying the craving of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Let, like the rest, we were by nature dis uh, deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgression, even when we were blind, even when we couldn't see clearly, right? It is by grace that you have been saved and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realm in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches and his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created by Christ Jesus to do good works which God had prepared in advance for us. Let me make this clear for you, right? When we talk about how it's been saved and we talk about how God saved me from drugs or God saved me from um, um, alcohol and all this, whatever, understand that's not the worst condition that you were saved from. The worst condition you were saved from is that was separation from God. That's the worst. And when you read and you soak yourself, and that's what that Bible verse was, that was he, the map, what he saved you from. Um, when you read the word, it unveils the true condition of yourself, of where you was. But when you're not in the Bible and under believe you don't know, you don't see the true condition. As I said, until they place that lens in my um, um, on my eyes, then I could I realized that what I was seeing before was not the true clearness of it. Until you take your life and you put it through the lens of the word of God, then you will understand the true condition that you were in and the true condition that you're in now. As it says, you were once dead to him, separated, far away from him, but then he brought you in and resurrected you in Christ. And the condition you're in now is in Christ, seated in Christ in heavenly realms. That alone will make you realize that the greatness and the, how much God has done for you. And this is our key, but only by reading and studying the word, do you really see the condition that God saved you from? Yes, you, were, you had drugs. Yes, you had a valley. Yes, you was battered. But that's nothing. The trueness and the depths of his grace that he took you when you didn't deserve to be with him and he brought you in with him in Christ. You always say about, we always talk about how um, 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 one of the key things is that when Christ was on the cross, 
and he talks because uh, he goes, why? Why have you forsaken? Why? That, that's the point where, because the sin of the world was on him and then he was separated for the first time. That was more pain for him than the physical pain he was feeling. Amen. So reading the word, the word, it reveals the true condition because as Christians, and this is what, what sometimes concerns me when the church is full and many people are there, but they don't really realize the true condition that they are in and that God has saved them from. Many of us say that God, as I said, God saved us from our life, from crime and drugs, but the truth is that God was not, that was not the worst condition you were saved from. Everyone was saved from damnation. You can believe something, but not be changed. This is another point, right? And this is what the word does. Like it reveals the truth, right? Many people, the, the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even into the dividing soul of the spirit, joint and marrow. It judges the thought and the attitude of the heart, right? We, are all, we all need the scrutiny of the word it, to bring our lives, for us to know who we are. Amen. I was saying the other day that um, you can you can read the word, you can believe in it, but until there's real conviction, the word will have no impact on your life. And that's what it says. It says that that the word of God is like a, it's a it's alive and active, like a double edged sword, going in inner into the inner man and convicting and changing it. Amen. The word of God will reveal the true condition. But when you say that you don't spend your time in it, how is that going to impact your life? How do you get to see you? I mean, like when I read the word it, and I, I take it and I look at the word and I look at my life through the lens of the word, I have to bow down to God and say, God, I thank you. I have to humble myself. God, I thank you. I do not deserve what you have done for me, but I thank you. I, I, I glorify in awe and appreciation. I, I look at my life condition. I look at the things I'm not happy about. But I just say, you know, God, all this is, yes, I may not have the job or the money, whatever, but God, I thank you for what you've done for me. Because what you have done for me is far greater than all these things that I'm looking for. But only when you take and you look at your life through the lens of the word. Amen. So that's two. Amen. Um, the word is the truth and the, the word transforms your life to change your life. And then I've covered number three. I've covered it before, but I'll, I'll say it again. It says the scripture reveals the character and the nature of God. In the scripture, we re, we, God reveals himself. There's a, there's a Bible verse that I love reading. And I remember sometimes when we're sitting, we're talking about is um, is in Job when God responds to Job. For me, that's one of the greatest um, chapters in the Bible because God in himself now speaks and God is speaking to Job in a indirect way. God is like telling him, this is my CV. And he says, who is this that darkens my, that my counsel? I will speak right now. You stand and respond. When I was setting the foundations of the, uh, of the earth, where was you? When I set the sun in its place, was you there? Can you call the, the sea and to, when I set the foundation for the sea and say to the sea, this is how far you will come and no further was you there? It talks about man, it talks about dinosaurs and things like that. When I when uh, uh, can you hold it? And 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 and, and it just talks about so much. God, when I read that um, chapter, I humble myself and I have to bow down. God, you are all great. It reveals the compassion of God. When I read in the Bible how God took um, Israel from um, from 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 um, what's it called from um, um, bondage out of Egypt, and He brought them out, and in the wilderness they were doing one thing after the other, one thing after the other, one thing after the other, and it made me realize reading that it made me see the compassionate and the ever loving God, the patient God that will stick by His word. When He made a promise to Abraham. Even though the people were, were doing everything to make that promise happen, he went, ran, and he orchestrated, and it still came to pass. When you read this, you see the character. You know the God you serve. But only in reading the word of God. We fellowship with Christ by knowing him in the written word. 
We talk to him on the basis of what we know of him from the written word. We hear him speak to us through what, we have, what he has shown us in, in his character and the purpose of his written word. The more time we spend in the word, the more you're spending time with him. The more opportunity you have to renew your mind and become more like him in how he thinks and how he behaves. There's no other way for you to know God more than spending time in his word. I, people come to me saying, oh, how, how can I know more? How can I um, 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 experience God more? Study his word. Study his word. God, God, God shows us, and people, another thing, people come to me, oh, how do I know God's will for my life? Study his word. He, he, he gives his will in his word, his, his purpose for your life. It's all in this word. We know him more. The importance, a lot of the complication for what happens, I've been from one, one of the, um, 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 from some of the, all right, let me just use pastors um, and phrase, in some village, in some um, countries, they lazy. They want one prophet to come and tell them. One prophet, this prophet to come and tell them, jumping from one, um, one conference to the next conference, looking for that prophecy from that prophet coming from them. But you know, sometimes really, you just need to go in for yourself. I always say to God, God, do, uh, if somebody has a prophecy for me, Lord, please give me a witness that I must be able to bear witness to what was said. I can't live my word on what somebody else is just on. I need that witness in my life. You must study it. Stop being a lazy Christian waiting for the prophet to come, waiting for the prophet to tell you that the water is stirred, now move. Let God speak to you. Seek him out in his word. Jesus said that he is the true um, reflection, uh, um, um, he's a true relation that no one, that there's no one who know the father except the father's will unless they know him. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. As believers, God desires to walk, um, walk in his way and God is not trying to hide his will from us. God is not trying to hide his will. He has given everything publicly for you there. Amen. It's just for us to desire to think. Our pursuit of a deeper desire of him is more than ever. Christianity is not a religion. It is a personal relationship with the living God. A relationship that's valuable is not an autopilot. It is something we pursue and we desire and we pursue consistently. Wow. Time. Amen. So that was number Number three, so we, we encounter God in the scripture. We know more of him. There's another Bible verse I'll quickly share. I remember, um, and this is, for me, God, when I read the word and I pray that it becomes life, it comes to life. It comes to life before me. It, it, I see it. I mean, I, just, I remember when I was younger and I was reading about um, um, Ezekiel when he was talking about the, um, the, the angels and the hair. He was, he was just um, referencing all about the wills. And I remember when he was talking about the angels, how the, um, the, the cherubims go around the throne of God all day, forever and ever. And every time they go around the throne, they say, holy, holy, they glorify. Man, I used to sit there, how, how? And then one day it came to life and I understood every time that they're going around, they've seen a new side of God. They've seen a new character of God. They've seen a new glory of God. And every time they've seen that, they just magnified in awe and they just have to glorify. Never bored, consistently growing. And I sat there and I said, God, consistently reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself in a new way. The more you're reading, the more God is showing himself. I'm sitting there. I remember once I was, I, I, I was studying, I was reading something. And after um, I was pondering it all day. And I remember I was at work one day. And what I was reading came in again into my mind. And God revealed it in a new way to me. That's how God you get to know. Consistently soaking your soul, devouring, reading, taking away every word that God says is not by mistake. And I always say to you, every text in the Bible was there for a purpose. It wasn't just by random. It was there for a purpose. Every parable that Jesus spoke about as a specific meaning, a specific teaching, it is there for a reason. And I, I began to, to just fall in love and consistently desire to dig deeper and deeper and deeper. Amen. Where are we? Um, four. Amen. Let me quickly rant. Point rant up. 
Four, the power to sanctify our lives. And it says in Ephesians 5, it says, husband, love your wives just as Christ, this is the point, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing of with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkles and without other blemish, but holy and blameless. Water for purification, washing of water. So, so back in the days, water was for purification. Washing the, um, with water was a ritual sign of holiness all throughout um, the laws of Moses and commandments. The word of God washes you and me. It's, it, it's used to sanctify us. Amen. Now that you purified yourself by obeying the truth, right? By obeying you. It says in 1 Peter um, 1, 22, it says, now that you purified yourself by obeying the truth so that you have, you, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another, another deeply from the heart. In um, John 15, it says, God's word has the power to cleanse us, sanctify us, as a ma and makes us holy. 2 Corinthians 10, and his word gives us the power to defeat sin and bring us through into spiritual obedience with him. The word of God sanctifies and cleanses. It cleanses, it sanctifies. It's how God uses to wash and clean you every day, consistently cleansing and washing. Every one of us, we bath every day. Well, I should hope so, but we bath every day. As Christians, this is our cleansing every day. See it as you washing yourself. Every day, every day you get up, or every day you're going, you're cleansing yourself. Let me just cleanse myself of the filth of the world that I've just constantly been bombarded with. The music, the word, the newspapers, everything. It's a cleansing, sanctification process consistently. The word of God consistently cleaning and cleaning. Amen. We are sanctified. It's made them in the truth. Your word is true. Amen. Amen. Time. So I really, okay, I'm going to jump up quickly, go. I want to round up um, quickly. So that's number four. Number five is we fight with the word. Amen. We fight with the word. So in Matthew 4, 1, 11, it says, Jesus answered, right? This is Jesus speaking and answering the um, devil in the desert. Say, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And then in seven, it says, Jesus answered him. It is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And then in um, verse 10, it says, Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Amen. In John 8, it says, you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The word is our, is, is our tool and our sword to fight this battle. We are not in a physical carnal fight. We are in a spiritual warfare against principalities. These principalities are not with boxing or fighting, whatever. They're not with strategy, whatever. They by the word of God. By the scriptures, by the scriptures. I remember even reading the Bible where, where um, it talks about how how um, how um, Satan was fighting with the angel for the body of Moses, and the say, and the um, angel said to him, he, he rebuked him through the word. They did not fight physically. He rebuked him through the word. Jesus, the ultimate um, 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 Christian, the 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 the, the, the template. The, even he was using the word to fight. It says that he will return, and he will return with a sword from his, in his mouth. The word, if, if we have a template that our fight, that we fight is by the word, why would you not study your weapon of warfare? Why would you not? The, listen, when you're sitting there and the enemy comes and you haven't got time to start opening the Bible, that, but that word and that fight must come from within you, of what you study and what's there to speak against what the enemy has set for you. Reading and studying God's word equips us to better handle life, challenges, and avoiding sins. Not reading the Bible, can, um, can, um, um, reading the Bible can um, prevent sins and things. It's, I have hidden my words in your heart that I may not sin against you, Psalm 119, 11. Reading the Bible contributes to our spiritual growth. As I said before, and I'll say it again, you will not find a spiritually mature Christian who does not spend time in the Bible. Every time Jesus was sleeping, he 
fought at the and understand this and i can't even go to it through that jesus picked out those scriptures not randomly but for a specific purpose they were all constructed for the purpose of what he was um, dealing with amen i've got five minutes left so i'll try and round up on that so we'll go back to where we started which was psalm 119 So one one nine, go back to it. it says, "Blessed are the undefiled in the in the way who walk in your law, who walk in your in your word of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep your testimony and who seek Him with a whole heart." As Christians, reading and studying time in the Bible and in the Scriptures is not an option; it's a must. It's a must. It's a lifestyle. We breathe in the word and we exhale in prayer and praise to God. Your prayer life is a direct result of the amount of time you spend in God's word. We breathe in his word. We soak it in and then we exhale it in prayer, in worship and praise to him. But many of us have many excuses. We're too busy. It's not priority, but there's one thing that says in Matthew 6, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. Seek ye first the things of God. Reading and being in the scriptures must be a priority for us. God expects us to invest our time and resource, passion and service into that which has eternal value. Those who have God's word in the, at their fingertip will answer to him for what they did with, their, with the high privilege. As believers, we walk we keep his word, we walk in his word, we keep his word, we follow his word. These are what governs our life. And I'll end on this scripture. John 14, 21. John 14, 21. John 14, 21, it says, um, 21. Um, it says, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And what? And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Another one says, I love him and I will show myself to him. As I said in the beginning, the key as Christians for us to be more like Christ and to have a deeper relationship with Christ. But we must be in the word to know Christ. As it says here, the one who keeps my word, the one who keeps my commandments, is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and reveal myself to him. I pray to every single person right now that God reveals himself to you that we seek and we desire and we pursue to know him a lot more in every manner and every way. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word, Lord God. Father, we thank you for the good things you're doing for each and every single person. We thank you for tonight remember, reminding us of the importance of seeking and pursuing you in the word, Lord God. As Christians, as believers, our desires and our purpose is to be like Christ. It's to be an extension of you in this earth as we continue and allow the Holy Spirit to work through us. Father, I pray that Father, our hearts and our desires begin to be desire to study, to go deeper, to learn. And as we read, and each and every person reads, Lord God, Father, that like your word comes to life to us that the word moves and everything comes to life, the colors and everything, your character is revealed, that we fall in love with it, that we have a passion to pursue it. Father, I thank you. I pray, Lord God, Father, on that day that these words do not speak against us, Lord God. I pray on that day that these words speak for us and on our behalf. Lord. I pray that when we look and we read, Lord God, and we take the words and use it as a lens for our life, that you begin to work in us, Lord God, and we allow ourselves to be yielded into your will. We thank you. 
magnify you and exalt you. Father, we thank you once again. And Father, look at these words, the promises that are in these words. And we begin to activate them. The promises that you have given your children, the children of Abraham, that for the descendants of Abraham, Father, as we are part, you grafted us in, Lord, that we begin to walk in them. And Father, as we study them and we see them, the principle, the laws, Father, that they become a part of our lives, Lord God. And Father, as we walk upon the earth and these promises have been spoken, because none of your word falls to the ground void, Lord God. And Father, Lord God, over our lives, your word will not fall to the ground void. But Father, they will go forth and accomplish and establish what you have said, Lord God. And Father, as we go to begin to take over mountains, Lord God, that Father, these words will speak on our behalf. They will go forth and open doors on our behalf, Lord God. They will fight on our behalf, Lord God. Father, we thank you. We magnify you. We exalt you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, everyone. Um, it's that time again, Pablo, um, as we um, close the service. But I just want to say that on there, that there's an um, offering. Um, that's another thing that God has commanded us and has encouraged us to do. And I want to encourage you as we continue to, we don't live for ourselves. We live to be a blessing, to be an extension for God. And as God has blessed you, we must be a blessing and extension to those around us. Because sometimes we are the only scriptures that others get to read. They don't get to have the physical scriptures that we are. We are the only scriptures and we are an extension of God on this earth. So be a blessing as you give today. Give um, cheerfully and abundantly. Thank you, everybody, and God bless you. Amen.